Mr. Ishan Nand Kishore. Namaste. What's up friends, the same kind of frustration is there when we are revising the intrinsic pathway of coagulation and partial thromboplast in time. In intrinsic pathway of coagulation, it has all those hideous Roman numerals starting from 12, 11, 9 and 8. How are we ever going to remember it? But when browsing the internet, I came across a presentation by Dr. Alice Ma who said that just remember the PTT is basic tenet of hematology and what this tenet stands for are nothing but the start of the coagulation factors of intrinsic pathway or we can call it the PTT pathway because PTT is the test that checks intrinsic pathway. So tenet stands for 12, 11, 9, 8 and 10 that is tenet. T for 12 that is factor 12, then factor 11, then factor 9, then factor 8 and the start of the common pathway that is factor 10. This is how we can remember the intrinsic pathway of coagulation that it is a basic tenet of hematology. So first there will be activation of factor 12, activated factor 12 will cause activation of the factor 11, then activation of factor 9, then activation of factor 8 and that factor will start the common pathway of coagulation by activating factor 10. Isn't it easy? Now we have to remember what are the causes of only prolonged partial thromboplastin time and normal prothrombin time. So only PTT will be prolonged in case of deficiencies of the factors of intrinsic pathway that is factor 12, 11, 9, 8. 10 won't be there because remember that 10 is in the common pathway and affects both the PT and the PTT. But what matters clinically is more important to us that is the deficiencies of factor 11, 9, 8, 7, 10, 5, prothrombin, fibrinogen and inhibitors of these factors are also clinically significant. But deficiency of factor 12 and presence of lupus anticoagulant though causing abnormal test of coagulation, abnormal screening test of coagulation are not clinically significant because they don't cause clinically significant bleeding. Now coming to the partial thromboplastin time test itself, how it is carried out. Platelet poor plasma is incubated at 37 degrees, then partial thromboplastin reagent is added in it. Hmm? What this reagent contains? It contains phospholipids that is cephalin and a contact activator. It could be anything, kaolin, micronized silica or allergic acid depending on the manufacturer of the reagent. So this reagent containing phospholipid and contact activator and patient's plasma which is centrifuged eh, to create platelet poor plasma is incubated at 37 degrees for 4 to 5 minutes and this is followed by addition of another reagent which contains nothing but calcium and addition of calcium initiates the clotting and timing of the partial thromboplastin time begins. Remember we have to all, we have to pre-warm all this to 37 degrees. Now PTT is the time taken from addition of calcium to the formation of fibrin clot. What most laboratories do is that they use an automated method of APTT in which clot formation is deemed to have occurred when optical density of the mixture has exceeded a certain threshold. That is, clot formation makes the mixture more opaque, right? And less light passes through. And this is detected by the machine. This is detected by the machine giving us the partial thromboplastin time. Okay? Now, common etiologies of an isolated prolongation of APTT includes medication, most important heparin and others, coagulation factor deficiencies associated with hemorrhage, Coagulation factor deficiencies of little or no clinical significance, non-specific lupus type anticoagulant and specific coagulation factor inhibitor. Now how do we evaluate isolated prolonged APTT? What we have to do is to carry out a mixing study. By that 
what we mean by that we mix patient's plasma with normal plasma which is containing all the coagulation factors if patient's plasma is deficient in some factors those factors will be replenished by the normal plasma and partial thromboplastin time of the mixture will be correcting to the normal in that case if the patients with this mixing studies are correcting the partial thromboplastin time then we have to do factor assays activities for factor 8 9 and 11 if all are normal then we have to go to factor 12 free calicrine high molecular weight kininogens if the mixing studies if the mixing studies do not correct the partial thromboplastin time then we have to do the lupus anticoagulant testing if that is positive lupus anticoagulant is present and we have the diagnosis of lupus anticoagulant if a lupus anticoagulant is negative then we have to do check for inhibitors of particular clotting factor we have to again perform specific factor assay for factor 8 9 and 11 and then based on the results of this test we have to carry out inhibitor assay for factor that is decreased that's how we can find the inhibitor of a particular clotting factor now there are conditions which are associated with prolonged epitty but without bleeding diathesis that includes factor 12 high molecular deficiency of factor 12 high molecular weight kininogen deficiency of precalicrine and presence of anti lupus anticoagulant these are the things that will cause prolonged epitty but there won't be any bleeding diathesis we have to also remember that excess citrate anticoagulant excess citrate anticoagulant can also lead to prolonged epitty without any bleeding diathesis that is a pre analytical issue or the sample collection issues the few more issues that can cause spurious results include the pre analytical pitfalls which we have discussed in lot more detail in the previous podcast but important of which include the partial clotting or overfilling and underfilling of the tube these are the most important so if there is a difficult vein puncture leading to partial clotting or too much blood is drawn or too little blood is drawn that is going to alter the plasma to anticoagulant ratio and going to interfere with the partial thromboplastin time testing the analytical pitfalls include the hemolysis of the sample again cause can be difficult vein puncture or speedy centrifugation or rough transport then severe ecteric and hyperlipidemic plasmas patients who are having severe jaundice or patients who are having hyperlipidemia results of partial thromboplastin time in these patients can be misleading because of interference in optical density by yellow or a turbid plasma yellow plasma because of jaundice and turbid plasma because of hyperlipidemia we have to also remember that certain drugs like estrogen ocpins diphenylhydantoin and radiologic contrast agents can also give spurious partial thromboplastin time results so friends this was brief presentation brief, brief podcast about partial thromboplastin time hope you liked it this is sachin kale saying you goodbye see you again next time